Hello, welcome to In The Shop. This is a bit strange, us being in here, Chris. Yes, Andy. This is a, a, a bass room, and I'm the one holding the guitar. Well. Set the scene, Chris Barachi. Imagine you going to an event. You play a gig, and um, you have some chats beforehand, and they're promising a backline mm. amp for you. They're like, oh, dude, no problem. We have an amp there. Just bring your board or guitar or whatever. You prefer and just stick in, it's all good. And you trust them. And then you arrive and there is no guitar amp. There's like maybe a bass amp, maybe two bass amps yeah. because they have no idea what they're doing or just a bass amp and your bass player is cool enough to say, ah, you know what, I'll just play DI. I'm good, you can use the bass amp. What do you do then? What should you expect? First of all, sweating, mm -hmm. swearing. Yeah. Hoping, shouting, praying, mm. shouting, leaving, coming back again. <laughs> but let's not let's spoil the surprise a little bit. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's well, not, it depends. But it you could have a good laugh and a really good time. Did you just disagree with me on video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. A <laughs> god. Okay, it could be bad, but it could be not so bad. Surprisingly good, even. I mean, that's obviously a more modern bass cap. What? <laughs> but it still works. It's yeah. like a six by 10, huge, you know, with neodymium um, speakers. So it's, it's a modern bass cap. If you'd mm -hmm. stick, I don't know, a four by 12 or a two by 12 guitar cap underneath this one, it would be probably even more fitting, but I love this warmth. It's beautiful. Can you can you kick in? We've got a little pedal board down here. Yeah. We've got the bonsai, we've got the fox catcher, and the blue sky. It is quite dry because yeah. it's, it's obviously a bass it's, amp. It's a so let's get it a bit wetter. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough reverb, so I cannot play it. I'm sorry. Well, tell me like, you didn't have fun doing that. It's such a different sound and still it somehow works. It's a bit too much fizzy crazy high mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a bass amp. It needs different frequencies. And, um, and I loved the, the mid range and this, this warm push. Let's try the Mark bass because I'm quite happy to make a video just playing this thing. But that's not the point of this video. Yeah. Let's stay realistic. Let's... When we turn the camera off, we'll go back to that and have a little jam, jam a Rooney. Um, in fact, by the way, thank you to Guillaume. Our very own uh, Jomd, because he's the reason we're making this video, because he was in here yesterday jamming through an Ampeg and it sounded magnifique. So, Chris, yeah, let's more likely to find a Mark bass. Plug like in the Mark bass. Mess it up, probably, because I know that it's being recorded now. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's exactly how I did it. Well done. Yeah, yeah. You got it yeah. first time. Um, so it has a rather nice jazz sound, but it's not going to sound, say, good in a rock band or anything that isn't solo guitar, maybe with some light little jazz brushes. Yeah, yeah. So you've turned up at the gig. The Mark bass is set for a bass player for some reason. Why would that be? I don't know. But let's make it sound more appropriate for us. So now we have all pretty much all the EQ knobs pointing, you know, 12 o'clock, which is standard. Uh, I definitely want a bit less crazy low end. Uh, I'm not sure about the low mids. Got to try it, you know, bit cut. 
uh, highs, uh, it's gonna make it to fizzy. Mid highs, probably we need that. And uh, there's the vintage circuitry, which gives us some more sort of a warm mid range. Uh -huh. I'm guessing that's gonna help. So uh, I will not cut that out. <laughs> It's different, but I reckon we can get a sort of usable sound out of this. Okay. Are we gonna try some pedals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go for a bit of gain. There that I, I, love, that I just uh, didn't. I love Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Well, I prefer the basement. Obviously, because. Hang on, I'm supposed to be giving advice here. Oh, oh. Uh, which? I've, I had a thought that we haven't done in this video, but we should. Okay. I'm going to make a statement now to see if you agree. Let's see if you agree. Leave the comments down below. Hmm. Every guitar player should own an EQ pedal. Oh. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should make a video about that sometime in the future. Hell yes. Absolutely. If you had an EQ pedal now, do you think that you'd be able to fix all these most, minor problems? Most probably. Uh, most uh, guitar EQ pedals only have the frequencies to boost or cut what you need. So uh, you might also combine it with the EQ knobs on a bass amp, but you would definitely have more control over very important frequencies. Absolutely, yes. That would probably save your gig, yeah. And anyhow, if you just have a guitar amp, an EQ pedal is one of the handiest tools ever. It's so underestimated. Have we answered the question or answered the, the given the solution to getting a decent sound? Well, uh, it depends on the amp. If you have luck to have a great Ampeg, old school Ampeg, or a basement Fender or something like this, or an orange, uh, you know, something that's mm -hmm. a tube amp actually and has that sort of mid-range and, and um, harmonic content you're probably gonna be all right and if you have something more modern more you know um scooped scooped yeah it's not gonna work probably or you will you will have like an okay sound but you will not really love it so maybe you should also in your pedal box bag gig bag apart from the eq pedal and a thousand overdrive pedals you should have an amp in a box, maybe at all times, to go ready straight into the PA. Something really small, something like the Raider, more Raider. Something that's like a backup plan is very nice. I also have a tiny little uh, Palmer, like a guitar DI, yeah. which will not sound like my amp. M from yeah, Tunes. or that, yeah, two Beautiful notes. New pedal. So many tiny solutions which fit in a gig bag and will probably save your day. So hang on, are we saying that if you turn up to a gig, and the back one is a bass amp that you just have to go out and buy an EQ pedal and like a cap simulator. <laughs> That's or, our solution. Or just twist some knobs and, you know, have fun anyway. Well, the message is it ain't all that bad. Yeah. Yeah. He agrees with me now. It's still better than plugging into the PA directly. Way, way better. Okay, here's a message to all you bass players out there, including <laughs> Julia Hofer, our one and only. Careful, careful. 
Would that be okay with you if you're at a gig and the guitar player insisted on playing through the bass amp and putting you through the PA? Let us know in those comments down below. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's all about, you know, one love. One band, one... All for one, one for all. And the guitar player being the loudest. <laughs> that too. Chris, thank you so much for playing this beautiful guitar through this oh, rather yeah. strange setup. Uh, I'm getting a bit freaked out spending all this time in a bass room, so yeah. I think it's time to leave. Give us a thumbs up. We always like to see those. It makes us smile in the mornings and the evenings. Leave us some comments down below. What are your suggestions? If you turn up to a less than perfect gig situation, what's your always in a gig bag? Is it an EQ pedal? Is it an amp in a box or something like this? An IR loader or something. Yeah. Whatever. And um, we'll see you sometime in the future, probably in an EQ pedal video. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And also in the comment section. And there. We'll be there. Chris, it's, it's been a pleasure. Oh, Ooh, let's do one of those. Thank you. <laughs> it's not awkward. It's not awkward. Goodbye. It's very dry hand, just. Yeah. And you're also uh, giving me some love there. <laughs> <laughs> that was so awkward.